If you're broken, if you're hurt, stay away from those other kind of people. Because mm -hmm. ain't nothing y'all going to be able to do for each other. Guess what the Bible calls it? From a spiritual perspective. Blind, blind the blind. The blind. Mm -hmm. And it says, where are they going to both fall? In a ditch. Right. Me if I, come on, Francis. Let me help you. <laughs> I can't help you to hell in the holes if I broke it myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Scriptures. Daily rehearsing and reminding yourself of what the Bible requires. Mm -hmm. I've given okay. you stuff to feed your spirit with. Mm -hmm. The Bible... The scriptures itself refers to the Bible as the sword. That's how we win the battles of life. It reminds you that you got to read it to be able to benefit from it. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't know what's in the Bible, how can you benefit from it? So you find applicable scriptures, as I pointed, and there are many other scriptures dealing with forgiveness and unforgiveness. But you rehearse them to yourself and build yourself up with them. Then the goal is to, after you, sorry about the voice, the goal is that after you rehearse these scriptures to yourself, now you build yourself up to walk in them out. Mm -hmm. Because, yeah, yes. but I'm going to tell you, when I got over that cold, oh, goodness. Now, we, we, we talk about how do I begin the process of forgiveness. Real quick, how do I continue in the process of forgiveness? Because some people start off, but they just don't finish well. Mm -hmm. I said, remember, you have been a perpetrator before. You've mistreated, disrespected, wounded, and harmed other people in the past, or even recently. Yet you still sought out forgiveness and mercy from God and people. And if not, that's a strong sign of pride. So always having that in your mind and remembering that you've been a perpetrator can help you, all right? It, can, it, should, it should be able to help you continue in the process of forgiveness. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Number two, remember, you don't have a right to seek from God what you're not willing to give out to others. Mm -hmm. Number three, remember, when you hold on to unforgiveness, this ultimately hurts slash harms you in the long run, not the other person or people. Mm -hmm. Conclusion of the matter. Ultimately, whether you forgive or not is your choice. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Ultimately, whether you forgive or not is your choice. This is not something God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost can make you do. That's a blank that you need to fill in. It is always the will of God for us to be forgiving towards others. But you must make the decision to take the proper steps needed to forgive. And that includes letting the Holy Spirit bring conviction and remind you of the words of Jesus. So God has endowed into us free will from the beginning. So he's not going to make you do anything his word says. He can only admonish you just like a parent. Technically, I don't care what parent you are, you can't make your kids do nothing. Not sure. You can only admonish them. And unfortunately, even again, when you put punishment as a reinforcement, that doesn't always work either. Because before somebody has to do before somebody does something, they don't want to do it. As a release to this. And remember, struggling with unforgiveness is not the problem. It's going to take time depending on the level of wounds, mm -hmm. depending on what has happened and what has transpired. It's going to take time, honey. That's not the problem. It's the blatant refusal to forgive other people. The blatant refusal to forgive other people. A blatant refusal to forgive or slash living in unforgiveness is 100% proof that you're not truly connected to Christ. Because remember, we're not talking about struggling because there's going to be certain processes you have to walk through. Again, depending on the level of emotional hurt, trauma, pain, wounds, all that. You have to walk this out. But the purpose is that you walk it out. Mm -hmm. But when you blatantly refuse to forgive, I'm telling you, you're not who you say you are. Amen. People that say, I, I, I love God, I love Christ. But you refuse to forgive, you really don't. Unforgiveness is not a simple fault or all have fallen short type thing. No, this is a blatant choice that should never have a permanent home in the life of any believer. And the only reason why I put that is because I was taking this from a Christian perspective. But as our friend Francis helps us to realize, this shouldn't have a place in anybody's life. Mm -hmm. Unforgiveness shouldn't be in anybody's heart. Anybody's life. It damages everybody, whether you're Christian or not. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't live in unforgiveness at the 
live in Christ at the same time. Do we agree? That's true. That's true. I'm going to say the one more time. You can't live in Christ. You can't live in unforgiveness and live in Christ at the same time. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us you got to make a choice. Mm -hmm. So our last declaration is this. Repeat after me. The love of Christ, the love of Christ forgave me. Forgave me. Therefore, therefore, I will, I will forgive, others. forgive others. Can we just clap our hands? Woo! Thank you.